Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven and Wuthering Waves video. <laughs> kind of both because we're going to be talking about Kuro games specifically. And if you haven't seen it yet, there is some controversy currently circulating around Kuro games and their behavior as a company. It has a lot of people on the CN side very upset currently with the company, and we're starting to see more of those details kind of trickle into the global side. There's a lot of speculation and unsubstantiated accusations being thrown around that it left me very confused and kind of concerned about some of the things uh, around these games as they're games that I really enjoy weathering waves you know from a hands-off perspective I'm excited to play it but punishing gray raven from the hands-on perspective that I've been really enjoying it and and having a lot of fun so kind of hearing about some of these controversy and, and things going on was a little bit concerning to me and I thought I would do my best to bring you the most confirmed information I could about what has gone on, why people are upset currently with Kuro games, and maybe offer a few thoughts of my own. I'm going to really try and avoid heavy speculation because there's a lot of allegations and things being thrown around at Kuro games, and I don't want to necessarily perpetuate a lot of things that have not been confirmed. So if there's anything I miss in this video and I don't totally address don't get upset with me. I'm not trying to avoid anything. I just want to be careful with what I'm talking about and not upsetting people on either side of this dispute right now. But we just want to accurately see what's going on. So as more things get confirmed, I'm happy to include those. And if there are any corrections, make sure to look down below. I'll have a pinned comment where I'll be adding more details. So again, if you if there's anything I miss here and that's kind of been lost in translation, let me know and I will look to add those things to the pinned comment. But if you do have that, make sure you are, you know, linking confirmed sources for where that is coming from. I'm not just going to throw in, you know, somebody leaves a random comment saying, well, yeah, because they suck because of this. I'm, I'm not doing that. I, I don't want to I don't want to spread a bunch of like, you know, lies basically around this situation. It seems to be fairly sensitive for a lot of people. So we're just going to try and keep it as accurate as we can. All right, let's jump into the potential really heavy details. This first started, I saw some stuff circulating on Twitter as well as some additional details on the cesspool that is Reddit, where they were talking about the layoffs that happened at Curl Games. So all of the frustration is currently centered around the fact that Curl Games recently just laid off 100 developers and designers from their company. Now, originally, there was an accusation that it was more than 100 freshmen or new developers that were laid off. However, I was able to look into that it's not exclusively freshmen. Uh, it seems to be a fairly sizable number. Wasn't able to get confirmation on, you know, the exact breakdown, but it was not exclusively freshmen from the details that I've been able to find. And by freshmen, what they mean is that they're currently in their probationary period. So, you know, when you get a new job, you know, the first three months, you know, you're on a probationary period to make sure you're right fit for the role. And if you, you know, perform well during that time, you're going to be, you know, kept on after the three months or if not, you usually get let go around that three month period. The probationary period is, from what I understand in this circumstance, is six months at Kuro Games, which is a pretty long probationary period. And from what I can tell, it seems to be pretty long on the CN side too. You know, I haven't been able to get like firm, firm fact checks on that, but that seems to be the case and kind of a little bit of a, a an off-putting for people there as well. This happened back on May 26th where the layoffs occurred. And that's why we're only kind of seeing it trail in recently onto the global side, uh, just because it's been a slow disseminating of information in that way. So layoffs at a company, especially a tech company, is not a new thing. I mean, we're seeing it with a bunch of the big tech companies uh, here in North America. You know, Twitter, Facebook, they're all having pretty significant layoffs because there was a lot of overhiring that took place you know, during certain events that took place over the last couple of years that I'm not going to mention just in case I get, you know, demonetized or hit or something for it for talking about it. But you know what I'm talking about. So that's not new. So why is this way more significant or way more concerning for the people involved? Because the term that's being thrown around on the CN side is that it's being described as animal behavior. 
uh, or another way of, that I was digging into it is just like really ruthless uh, and, and very, you know, lacking compassion in the circumstance. And I was a little confused, like, look, layoffs are layoffs. So I was like, well, why is that the case? It seems to be centered around two factors, one of which being, you know, people on the probationary period where they were let go. It was like two days before the end of the probationary period, which seems is like really rough uh, because of some financial ramifications but also because general market ramifications. And what those ramifications are is that in on the CN side, as best I can tell, they have something called job seasons. And, and this is what typically when you see big changes in the job market on the CN side. So I did a little bit of research into it and found that typically around winter, uh, you know, uh, the Chinese New Year uh, and the holidays, there's big year end bonuses that go around. And so people aren't looking to change from their jobs, you know, in the winter, but it becomes a hot season between the months of around March to April. I don't think it's a, you know, a hard number, a hard date, but around the months of March to April, that's typically when you're going to see a lot of job changes. That's when new hiring takes place. That's when a lot of people switch to other companies. There's kind of like a big shuffle that happens around uh, in the market during that time where then people, you know, go into their probationary periods and then continue on with their jobs in in the new market and they kind of you know typically stay in that until kind of the next year the next season where we might see more shuffles take place because curl games has a six-month probationary period and when they were let go it's actually at a really tough time to find new jobs so it's seen as kind of like with having such a long probationary period the difficulty for those employees to get new positions has just gone up a lot. And that's why a lot of people are saying that that was kind of ruthless of them to do that. The other reason for it is due to this article that has been circulating around now, where it was allegedly an interview with two employees that were let go from Curro Games. They did an interview kind of talking about their hiring process, talking about the kind of like salary and compensation, uh, as well as a few additional details. And so I spent some time Translating this article, not by hand, I'm not that smart, but using an AI translator. And again, we're going to take some massive grains of salt on this as it is AI translation. So things could have been lost in context. We're like, like I said, massive grains of salt that we're going to be dropping on this part. Uh, but, you know, they go to on to talk about, you know, how they started with, you know, wanting to join the company. They talk a little bit about a certain virus that shall not be named as being kind of like a big factor for why they chose to come to the company and, and kind of their onboarding and starting experience. They go on to then talk about the salary structure at the company and that, you know, being private. There is no equity or stock options. So a lot of it comes down to a fairly complex pay structure. I'm going to butcher it if I try and actually break down all of the technicalities. But the best I understand it is there's quarterly bonuses based on performance. They are set to a sliding scale. And the way that it all breaks down is that the performance bonuses in, aren't just gravy to a base salary, but in a way are almost considered part of your base salary. So if you lose out on those performance bonuses, it's like taking a pay cut. If you do really well on those performance bonuses, it is like getting an additional amount on top of your normal salary, which leads down to the summary here where they mentioned that effectively, if you meet your performance bonuses, you can be paid an equivalent of like 15 month salary. Or if you miss a lot of those uh, performance metrics, you could be paid to the equivalent of like a six month salary. So not only is losing your job difficult enough, if you lose out on these, it's pretty significant. And from what I understand right here, it says for someone like me who has not completed the probationary period, the second half of the signing bonus will not be paid. So anybody who was signed recently does have a huge loss of income by not meeting that six month probationary period are now going into a slower job market where they're going to have a harder time getting a new position based on the season of hiring. So it's kind of all of those things that come together that is why they're kind of getting a lot of flack for the position that they're currently in and, and the treatment of some of the employees. So that's where I'm going to kind of put a pause on the situation in that those are the details that I've been able to muster as like 
fairly accurate, uh, somewhat factual, or at least alleged by former employees as the situation. It's kind of all of those things that have been put together. As somebody who still feels way too uneducated to say what's appropriate or not in this circumstance, it does seem pretty rough. And uh, my heart, again, definitely goes out to those people who have have lost their jobs in this circumstance. It's going to be uh, like really rough. I can't imagine what it would be like to be in that circumstance. But, but again, if there's more details and things that I have not seen, feel free to link them down below. We'll leave some stuff in the pinned comment. Maybe we can kind of monitor the situation too, see how it changes if there's you know more things as a result uh, of it. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. I know a little bit more of a different, maybe even a slightly heavier video in this circumstance. It's never fun to talk about this. And, you know, it's a bit of rough news that kind of came through. But uh, I'm still, you know, optimistic about the games. And and I will say, I don't think this is a reason that you need to necessarily stop playing the games. I mean, like if this is something that, you know, personally is you care about and you and it is an infringement on your kind of moral standing and so you're thinking no I can't support this anymore I mean like look that's that's your decision but also I think if you're somebody who wants to continue to playing the game because the games are fun and you enjoy them I think you should also feel free to do that too if we stopped playing games every single time a company did something we didn't like I don't think there'd be any games in the market that any of us could play because I don't think there are any companies that have spotless records uh, especially in recent years with things that have come about so that's gonna be it for this one guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time